Hey everyone, Arunan here to give a supplemental to today's lecture. And I'll be going over specifically just the motors. So here on the right are the motors that we will be using uh, in our rat designs and your future mouse designs. And it is a brushed motor with a 30 to one gear ratio. Please watch the lecture recording to understand why uh, and why it's significant that we have 31, 30 to one gear ratio. And the motor also has a ideal operating voltage of six volts and a maximum current draw of 0.67 amps. And knowing these figures is important to understanding and knowing how to power the motor, as I'll cover in a few slides. So motor control, there are three aspects to it. Being able to turn it on and off, being able to control if it turns clockwise or counterclockwise, and also its rotational speed of the shaft. So first off, motor power. So here's an incorrect diagram of how to control the motor. And why is it incorrect? So first off, let's understand what we have here. The microcontroller pin is supplying the signal and power to the motor. And then this is ground. So why would this not be, why is this not the optimal way of, optimal way of powering the motor? Well, the ideal motor specs are 6 volts and 0.67, uh, 0.67 amps, whereas the pin maximum voltage that it could output is 3.3 volts and a current of approximately 100 milliamps, which is not nearly enough uh, for running the motor. So what is the solution to the problem? Directly using battery voltage. However, there's a problem with that. Directly using the battery voltage would mean that the motor is on the whole entire time uh, until the battery runs out of power. And obviously we don't want that to happen. That, that shouldn't be the case. So, what component acts like a switch that can allow us to turn on and off the motor? Well, a transistor. And there are three um, pins or leads into a transistor, the emitter, the base, and the collector. So the base is what acts and does the switching. So when you have a low signal being fed into the base, the current will, will be prevented from flowing to the, from the collector to the emitter. But when a high signal is passed to the base, current will be allowed to go from the collector to the emitter. That's a switch-like property. So what should be attached to what? So what should be attached to the base from the previous diagram? Well, that should be the microcontroller pin output because that determines when the motor should be turned on or off. And what should be passed into the collector emitter? Well, the battery, motor, and ground. And here again is a diagram of the circuit working. So when the pin is feeding at a high voltage um, or feeding at a high input to the base, current is allowed to flow from the collector to the emitter that's turning on the motor. And when the pin is passing in low to the base, then the current is not allowed to flow from the current, sorry, it's not allowed to flow from the collector to the emitter that's preventing current flow, thus preventing the motor from running. So this is a nearly completed circuit, but what are we missing? Well, we have a new problem uh, when we run electric motors. Inductance. So turning the motors off results in a voltage spike to maintain current, but why and what does that mean? Well, when you, for example, when, you, when you're in a car and you take your foot off the gas pedal, it doesn't mean that the car will stop immediately. Rather, the car will keep on rolling and then come to a stop. Similarly, when you stop passing in electric power to the, to the electric motors, it doesn't mean that the micro mouse will stop immediately. Rather, it will move it will keep on moving a bit more forward, thus rotating the motor shaft until it then comes to a stop. Well, during that time where the motor power is stopped and the micro mouse actually stops, the motor acts like a generator. So in a motor, the electrical energy is turned into rotational energy, but in, in a generator, the rotational energy is turned into electrical energy. And this causes a back EMF or back electromotive force, which is just a backwards flowing current or voltage. So how do we stop current from flowing the wrong way? Well, there's a component that allows us to do that, and that's a diode. And diodes allow current to only flow in one direction, from the, namely from the anode to the cathode. And this will only allow current to flow back to the battery, thus preventing the harming of any other ICs or other circuit components that would be harmed by the back EMF. So more about transistors. So not only do they act as on and off switches, meaning zero or 100% power being supplied through the circuit, but they also act as variable gates that allow varying amounts of current 
to pass through from the collector to the emitter. And this depends on the signal uh, or like the value of the signal between low and high passed into the base pin. And this is possible uh, digital, this is possible by a digital signal by doing or using pulse width modulation or PWM. And we'll go over that in a upcoming slide. So now for motor direction. So take that previous diagram that we had here, multiply by four or duplicate it four times and we get this. So what is an H bridge and, what, and why do we want it? Well, an H bridge allows us to control the motor direction. So meaning clockwise or counterclockwise. Not speed yet, but direction. So as you can see here, we have four transistors denoted by Q and four di flyback diodes denoted by D. So what happens if we turn on Q1 and Q4? Well, let's see. So of course, the power wants to go from, from VCC to ground. So how does, how does it take that path? Well, if we turn on Q1 and Q4, the current won't be able to go through D, won't be able to go through D3 or D1 because current can flow from the cathode to the anode. And it can't go Q3 because the base uh, pin uh, reading or input is low or zero. So thus the current can't flow from the collector to the, to the, uh, to the output. However, because the Q1 base pins reading will be high, it will allow current flow. And thus it will go from VCC through the transistor Q1. And now we're here at this junction or at this junction. Well, it won't go through Q2 for the same reason it won't go through Q3 because the base pin will have a low um, and it won't go through D2 and D4 because uh, of the properties of a diode. And it will go from VCC through Q1, through the motor, through Q4 because the base uh, pin reading of, the Q of Q4 will be high. And then it will go to ground, perfect. And so the current will go through the motor in the rightward direction. So what happens if we turn on Q2 and Q3 instead? Well, due to the exact same reasoning, but applied to Q2 and Q3, the current will go left through the motor. Please take a moment uh, to understand that for yourself. And what happens if we turn on all four? Well, that's really bad. We don't want to do that, but why? Because it causes a short. Because when, because when Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 are all on, all the bases, will have a high value or high reading, thus allowing current to pass through from their collectors to their emitters, thus allowing for a short circuit right here and a short circuit right here, as shown in this animation diagram. Okay, so now let's take this H bridge, which can control the direction of one motor and multiply it or duplicate it twice or duplicate it once again to get uh, the H bridge for another motor and then combine these two H bridges to control the two different motors into one circuit component or a dual H bridge integrated circuit or IC. So this one IC controls two motors. Um, so really quick, it has four inputs, two for each motor, four outputs, two for each motor and enable pins. So first of all, why four inputs? Or sorry, rather, why do we have only two for each motor when clearly in this diagram we had four for each motor? Well, there's never an instance in which Q1 and Q4 uh, will be turned on separately because Q1 and Q4 will always be turned on simultaneously uh, or off. And Q2 and Q3 will always be turned on simultaneously or be turned off simultaneously. They'll not be turned on or off independently. So thus we can have Q1 and Q4 be linked or uh, be linked by one input and Q2 and Q3 be linked by another separate output. Thus two inputs, two inputs per motor, times two motors, that's four inputs. So now what do, what do we mean by outputs? What exactly is that? Well, the outputs are kind of like the logic that controls the direction itself. So this lead right here on the left and this lead right on the right are the outputs that we are referring to, two per motor. So thus you can see one, two. And these control the, the, the flow or the direction of the flow of current through the motor. So it will allow the current to either flow this way or this way. And again, we need two outputs per motor because of this this lead on this positive end and this lead on this negative end. And two outputs per motor times two motors, four outputs. And now what are the enable pins? These are separate from the input pins. 
So even if the input pins are, are high or, or are intending to turn on the motor, if the enable pins are low, then the motors will not turn on. Enable pins act as safeties to prevent accidental turn-ons or accidental erroneous signals being passed into the motor controller, thus preventing any accidental turning ons or off or turning ons of the motor. Because if the enable pin is low, the motor will always be off. And there's an enable pin for the first motor and the second motor. And here's the dual H bridge in the uh, schematic for uh, Autodesk Fusion 360 PCB um, and VS. Uh, um, as we can see here, battery power is being supplied to VS and VSS. VS is the battery supply, uh, is the is the power supply uh, for the motors, and VSS is the power supply for the internal logic gates that control um, that that do all this input output action. And we have decoupling capacitors to remove remove any noise from the battery signal or uh, power. And these are some physical ICs. We have this big chunky one uh, on the upper right. This smaller one IC uh, that we will use in our RAT. And in your micro mouse design, you'll actually use an SMB surface mount um, IC that is much smaller. And now for motor speed or the rotational uh, velocity of the shafts. So currently our micro mouse, we can uh, turn on and off the motor, but only at two speeds, 0% or 100%. So how do we actually get it to be able to go some in-between speed? Pulse width modulation, or PWM. So we can manipulate for how long the signal is high and how long the signal is low. And this will enable us to get a range of voltages from 0 to 100%. And so how does this actually allow the motors to work? Uh, at these in-between voltages? Well, the motors have inertia, so they respond slowly to these rapid voltage changes. So even if it's just zero, if we, even if we're just switching between zero and 100% uh, very quickly, it will just seem as if we're passing in or powering the motors at an in-between voltage. So the key to understanding PWM and describing it is duty cycle. So this describes it the percent of time that the period or signal is high. So what does all this mean? Uh, let's go over it. So one period, so as you can see, this is a, this is a kind of like a, a square waveform. So what defines a period? A period is one set of on and off. So one period is from here to here, from here to here, here to here, and so on and so forth. So to calculate the duty cycle, you would want to divide the amount of time that the signal or the period is reading high divided by the period time length itself times 100 to get the percentage. So if the signal is being is high 50% of the time and then thus low for the rest 50%, then you have a 50% duty cycle. If it's if it's a high as a if the signal is high for 75% of the period and low for the other 25%, 75% duty cycle, and same logic for 25% duty cycle. And frequency is a number of cycles per second. So how many of these periods uh, occur within one second? So before I go over um, the to go over like the, the last four bullet points, um, really quick regarding the first bullet point. So not all pins can produce a PWM signal as in have this having this property of switching on and off the signal to produce an in-between, uh, quote unquote, in-between voltage. Um, rather, you need to make sure that the pins are PWM compatible. Uh, and that is very essential uh, to powering a motor. So the MCU or the microcontroller unit has a clock speed of 16 megahertz or 16 million counts per second. The H bridge has a maximum frequency of five kilohertz or 5,000 uh, periods that it can take per second. And so now we have to figure out how many of the microcontroller counts uh, go into one period of what is being fed into the H bridge. So 16 million counts, 5,000 or oh, 16 million counts per second. 5,000 periods or waves that need to be produced per second. So that means 16 million divided by 5,000, 3,200 clock counts or cycles per period. So that means for one period, there are 3,200 clock cycles or counts. So in order to produce a 50% or 75% duty cycle, let's cover 75% uh, because it's listed here, you would want to have the signal be high 
high for 75% of the 3,200 counts, meaning 2,400 of those uh, clock counts. Uh, so for 2,400 of those clock counts, the signal will be high, whereas for the remaining 800, it will be low or zero. And that's how, we, how you would produce a 75% duty cycle uh, using this information. And now, uh, again, here we can see that 32 clock, 3,200 clock cycles describes one period. And now that's everything for turning on and off the motor, its direction and its motor speed. I hope this really helped. Uh, please come to our Friday work session at 6 p.m. in the IEEE lab. And uh, please get started on the assignments ASAP so that way you don't fall behind. And if you have any, any questions, please, 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 please ask me or Parth um, on Discord, in person, especially at the work session. Uh, just at any chance or any way you can find out. <laughs> so please let us know if you need help. All right, have a great night and good luck with your midterms.